Health authorities in the UK are being instructed by the government to further fluoridate public drinking water. Under Section 58 of the Water Act 2003, water companies now have to fluoridate drinking water if asked to do so by a strategic health authority. The government has suggested that fluoridated drinking water leads to a decrease in tooth decay and therefore a reduction in dental health costs. However, many studies appear to show that on the contrary, fluoridated water actually increases dental problems and potentially has many other adverse health effects. When I contacted the Department of Health, they informed me that the decision to continue fluoridating British drinking water was made based on a scientific review conducted at York University. Hello. Hi there. Okay, the research which we used is based around evidence provided by the University of York report, a systematic review of water fluoridation published in September 2000. Okay. And that's pretty much that's it. That's generally what, what, what we've used, um, which is, it states that it concluded that water fluoridation increased the number of children without tooth decay by 15%. Okay. So, uh, but they they also reported that um, found that no evidence of any risk of overall health, overall health from there was no evidence of any risk to overall health from fluoridation. The problem with this position is that the authors of the York review do not agree with the way the government has interpreted the review. The um, interpretations, shall we say, of the of the evidence from the original York review have been over-optimistic, but then it applies to both sides as far as I'm concerned. I mean, neither. It's very difficult to get an objective um, uh, summary of information mm. in such a polarised debate. Sure. Right. It, it just seems funny to me that, that this is the, the one thing that the Department of Health pin it on, and it's really, from what I can gather, not conclusive. No, no, I, I would agree. I'm, I'm one of the authors. <laughs> I would say that what the re review actually established is that we know um, rather less about water fluoridation than we thought we did, and that's that's the big surprise. Mm. And uh, I think from a sort of um, uh, sort of public policy point of view, the evidence around using water fluoridation to reduce inequalities in dental health is is um, scanty and unreliable. I think that's. Uh, be saying anything controversial by saying that so um, you know that's it's not a great evidence base on which to take forward a policy I'm not saying that you know uh, that there shouldn't be uh, an informed debate about whether water fluoridation is the right thing to do or not I just uh, think that the evidence is is, is, uh, is very poor in relation to other interventions. Professor Trevor Sheldon, head of the Department of Health Studies at York University, who was chair of the group who conducted the review, has criticised the British Dental Association, the British Medical Association, the National Alliance for Equity in Dental Health and the British Fluoridation Society for misleading the public about the review's findings. He stated, The review did not show water fluoridation to be safe. He also pointed out that there were no firm conclusions and that more research was needed. It is important to note that the fluoride added to drinking water is not naturally occurring calcium fluoride. It is a byproduct of the chemical industry called fluorosilicic acid. The UK government will not reveal the source of this byproduct. Former BBC producer Chris Bryson explain the process in a documentary called The Fluoride Deception. Very few dentists are aware that the fluoride in public water supplies is a pharmaceutical grade product. It is in fact an industrial waste. It's the uh, waste from the Florida phosphate industry. In the 1950s, the Florida phosphate industry was being sued 
by farmers and citizens living near those plants because of the fluoride that was killing their cattle, destroying their crops. You know, the Florida phosphate industry today is prevented from having to dispose of its industrial effluent in a toxic waste dump by the device of shipping that in tanker trucks around the country and dumping it in our water supply. The ethical implications of treating a population without their consent are enormous. The British public have a right to decide whether or not their drinking water is treated with fluoride. Most other European countries have interpreted the science correctly and have not ever risked fluoridating their public drinking water. Studies are beginning to show that there are not just adverse physical effects linked to fluoridated water, but there are also psychological effects. Evidence does appear to show that the pineal gland and the central nervous system's functionings are severely affected by high exposure to fluoride. Those exposed can therefore become more docile and passive due to the distortion of melatonin production. Perhaps this was why chemical versions of fluoride were added to the water in Nazi and Soviet concentration camps. According to the UK Drinking Water Inspectorate, a local public consultation must first take place before any fluoridation can proceed. Get in touch with your local primary care trust and ask them about your drinking water. If you get a chance to attend a consultation, bring as much scientific data as you can and get it on record. The National Pure Water Association, based in the UK, and the American-based Fluoride Action Network both provide evidence that puts in doubt the government's claims. Investigate the science for yourself, and if you feel the government is in the wrong, then take action. I know.